Hello, in this video I'll be going over number 51 through 60 from the April of 2024 ACT math test. For each problem, if you have not already read over the problem, be sure to press pause and then come back when you're ready. Number 51, log base 5 of 625. This is basically asking 5 to what power equals 625? Okay, if you have just a very basic calculator, you can just try these out like 5 to the 3rd equals 125. 5 to the 4th does equal 625, so that would be the answer. If you have a TI-84 calculator, you can use their log base feature. You would just press the math button and then the up arrow to log base and then you'll end up with something that looks like this. You can just input the 5 here and the 625 here. Now, if you don't have a TI-84, but your calculator does have a log button, you can just do the log of 625 divided by the log of 5. And notice I have the entire top in parentheses and the entire bottom in parentheses. Otherwise, it will not work. Number 52. 7x squared y is less than 0 is the same as saying 7x squared y is negative. So we have a positive number times, let's see, whenever you multiply, square a number, whether it's positive or negative, you're going to get positive. So you're going to have a positive times a positive. So this has to be a negative to get a value that's negative. So the y has to be negative. The answer is j. Number 53 is a very similar problem. They only mention that c does not equal d because if they were equal, the denominator would be equal to 0, and we know that's not allowed. But anyway, we have this expression right here is less than zero, and that means that it's negative. Now, I notice right away I see a C and a D up top and a C and a D on the bottom. So I'm thinking that I have to factor out the common factor for each one. So factor out of B, we get this. Factor out of 6, we get this. And now those cancel, and we're left with B divided by 6 is less than zero. In other words, B divided by 6 is negative. Well, for this to be negative, b has to be a negative number. So 53 would have to be e. Number 54. So we need to remember that when k is negative, when you have a negative exponent, for example, 2 to the negative 1, that means 1 over 2 to the 1, which is 1 half. 2 to the negative 3 will be 1 over 2 to the 3rd, etc. And notice no matter what this negative exponent is, we're always going to get a fraction. And this fraction is always between 0 and 1. So that would mean the answer is J, all positive numbers less than 1. Number 55. We need to familiarize ourselves with the law of sines and the law of cosines. These are used for trig functions when you do not have a right triangle. If you notice the setup here, the, cap, the capital or uppercase letters represent the angles, and the lowercase letters represent the lengths of the sides. And notice that A is opposite A, B is opposite B, etc. So the law of sine can take the sine of an angle over its corresponding side equal to the sine of another angle over its corresponding side. And you can use any two of these ratios to form a proportion. For the law of cosine, okay, we got the same setup with the uppercase letters and the lowercase letters. And let's look at, for example, A. So the length A squared is equal to the other two guys squared minus 2 times the other two guys times the cosine of this angle. So it's always the side and then stuffed onto the other two sides and the cosine of that angle. Okay, so for number 54. Uh, answer A, I have no idea why that, that's there. For B, this looks like it's correct, except they have the sign of the side, could notice the lowercase letter, over the angle. It should be the sign of the angle over the side, so that's wrong. Answer C, looks like it could be right, except they're using cosine in the law of sine, so that can't be right. So I think we're down to D or E. If you notice for D, you've got B squared equals stuffed onto the other two sides 
But then here you have B itself. Remember, it's supposed for B, it's supposed to be the other two sides right here. Now for E, it's exactly the way we want it. So C squared is equal to the other two sides, the other two sides, and the cosine of our angle. So the answer is E. Number 56. This is not a problem I've seen very often in various tests, but let's take a look at it. So this right here means how many events happen for a certain thing. So we know that A, event A has six events, and event B has three events, and they said none of them in B are in A, so there's no intersection. So they said that event C is the union of A and B. Union means you, you put it all together, so anything that's in A or anything that's in B. So that would be a total of nine events. Now D was the intersection. Intersection kind of means and. Well, there are no events that are in A and B because of what it said up here. So A has six events, B has three, C has nine, and D has zero. So the answer is J because zero is less than three, which is less than six, which is less than nine. Number 57, finding the surface area of a square pyramid. I'm sure there's a formula and I don't know it, so I'm just going to figure it out. We just need to add up all the surfaces. First of all, the, the base, the square, is 20 by 20, so its area is 400. Now, if I just take one of these triangular sides, take a look at that, the bottom would be 20, and the height would be 15, and the area of a triangle equals 1 half base times height, that gives me 150. So each one of these side triangles, the area is 150, so let's just do the total of the base plus the four sides, and we get 1,000, so the answer is C. Number 58, we want to know how many positive prime numbers can we get from this. Let's just remember what prime means. Prime is a number that has exactly two factors, one in itself. So these are some examples. These are not prime numbers because look, we can have 1 and 12, or 3 and 4, or 6 and 2, even odd numbers like 35, or 5 times 7. So these are not prime. So right off the bat, I'm thinking we have two different numbers being multiplied here. Um, so there's no way we're going to get a prime number. But I did have to look at, well, what if one of these numbers becomes 1? So for this to be 1, it would be 2 minus 1 would be 1. But then 2 minus 4 would be negative 2. So it would be 1 times negative 2 would be negative 2. That's not a positive number. Okay. Or x could be 5 to make this a 1. So it would be 5 minus 4 is 1. And 5 minus 1 is 4. So that would be 1. Uh, 4 times 1, that would be 4. And we know 4 is not a prime number because 2 goes into it. So basically, everything else is just going to give me two completely different numbers, kind of like this. So there's no way we're going to get a prime, so the answer is F, 0. Number 59, what value of x is not in the domain? The domain is the numbers that you can put in for x. Well, remember, when you have a fraction, the denominator cannot be equal to 0. So if the secant of x was equal to negative 1, 1 plus negative 1 equals 0. So we can't have the secant equal to negative 1. Now, if you know your trig functions, you know that the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. And the reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. So the cosine cannot be equal to negative 1. So we just have to figure out for what angle is the cosine equal to negative 1. Well, on your calculator, for example, this TI-84, right here above cosine, we have the inverse cosine. So you press second in that. So if you did inverse cosine of negative 1, you would get 180 degrees. Using the inverse um, trig functions on the calculator is, is this simple. All right. If you know that the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half, then if you do the inverse of, okay, it's supposed to say one half right here. If we do the inverse sine of one half, we would get 30 degrees. So anyway, we don't want this to be negative one. So we do the inverse cosine of negative one, we get 180 degrees. So the answer is E. 
number 60. So we have a sequence of numbers. The first number is 1 half, the second number is 3 halves, then 9 halves, and then 27 halves. I see a pattern here. If I multiply 1 half times 3, I get 3 halves. If I multiply that by 3, I get 9 halves. Multiply that by 3, I get this. So this is what we call a geometric sequence. You just start off with a particular number, any number, and then you multiply by the same number repeatedly. Okay. Now there's a formula for this. To find the nth term in a sequence, you just take the first number, you multiply by the common ratio, that's the number you're multiplying by, to the power of your number n minus 1. So for example, okay, for this sequence, it'll look like I'm just starting with 4, and then I keep multiplying by 2. So this is a geometric sequence. So to find out the nth number in the sequence, I'll just take the first number, multiply by the common ratio, to the power of n minus 1. So if I wanted to figure out the, the ninth number, my n is 9, take the first number, times 2 to the 8th power, n minus 1. So for this problem, it looks like we're starting with 1 half. Okay, So we're already down to h, j, and k. And we're multiplying by 3, so that eliminates h. We're multiplying by 3. And remember, we're not doing it to the n power, we're doing it to the n minus 1 power. So the answer is J.